Good morning, I'm Engineer Crusalin Cortez, and we will be discussing the reciprocating engine. For the next few days, we'll be discussing the following. First is the introduction, which contains the definition of terms and the principles. Next is the reciprocating engine, its characteristics, classifications, construction, and operation. And for the third and the last part are the engine analysis and the thermodynamic applications. In 1876, Nicholas August Otto was a German engineer that developed the piston engine. It offered a practical alternative to the steam engine as a power source for mechanically operated machines. It is a four-stroke internal combustion engine which converts chemical energy into mechanical energy. Heat engine is a device that produces power from heat generated during chemical reaction, while air is the working medium capable of changes in volume and pressure when subjected to an increase in temperature and combustion. The auto cycle. The four strokes of a piston engine consists of induction, compression, power, and exhaust. This is also known as the auto cycle. The process is sequential, wherein it happens in a timely manner for each stroke that is distinct and separate. During the process, the piston moves in a reciprocating motion. Here are some terms that are commonly being used in the discussion of the reciprocating engine. Cylinder, cylinder head, crankshaft, intake valve, exhaust valve, piston, piston ring, connecting rod, spark plug, crankcase, camshaft, and cam lobe. Let's start with the piston and the piston ring. The piston is moving within the cylinder. It has rings that prevents the gases from escaping the cylinder in a timely manner, which is also attributed to loss of power. The piston ring is a metallic split ring attached to the outer diameter of a piston in an internal combustion engine or a steam engine. It serves as a seal in the combustion chamber so that there is minimal loss of gases within the crankcase. Next is the connecting rod. This links the piston and the crankshaft, the intake and the exhaust valves. The intake valve in the cylinder opens at the proper moment in the, in the cycle to allow the fuel and air mixture to be drawn into the cylinder, while the exhaust valve allows the exhaust gases to be scavenged out of the cylinder. The camshaft. This is a device that controls both the input of the fuel and the expulsion of exhaust fumes. It consists of several radial cams, each displacing intake and exhaust valves, and is connected to the crankshaft via timing belt, chain, or gears. The timing belt. The timing belt is also known as the cam belt. This synchronizes the rotation of the crankshaft and the camshafts, so engine valves open and close at proper times during intake and exhaust strokes. Cam lobe. The cam lobe controls the valve lip, and there is a di direct relationship between the shape of the cam lobes and the way the engine performs in different speed ranges. Crankshaft. It is a rotating shaft which converts 
reciprocating motion of the pistons to, to the rotational motion. It is commonly used in an internal combustion engine and consists a series of cranks and crank pins to which the connecting rods are attached. The crankcase. This houses the crankshaft. In most modern engines, it is integrated into the engine block. It is the foundation of a reciprocating engine, and it contains its internal parts, which provides a mounting surface for the engine cylinders and external accessories. It is made of cast aluminum alloys. A four-stroke engine typically have an oil sump at the bottom of the crankcase, and the majority of the engine's oil is held within it. Aside from the engine crankcase that I've shown a while ago, here is a picture of a radial engine crankcase. It is divided into four distinct sections. The number of sections can be as few as three or as many as seven, depending on the size and type of the engine. In general, a typical radial engine crankcase is separated into four main sections. The no section, the power section, supercharger section, and the accessory section. Last but not the least, the cylinders. This is also known as the power unit of the engine. It is a chamber where the avgas is burned and turned into power. An engine with more cylinders produces more power, while an, an engine with fewer, fewer cylinders gets better fuel economy. So that's it for part one.